Hello everyone and welcome to the Ed and Josh Oral Brock webisode number 58. The episode where I finally use the theme song that I wrote about that I wrote and then forgot about. <laughs> I wrote this theme song for the show uh, July 20th and I just realized that I forgot about it today. This is the theme song I wrote. There's no lyrics. But the cool thing about being a musician is that you can write your own theme songs, right? It's a, it's a real simple, just chord progression from da -da -da, it's like you hold on the third fret on a C power chord da -da, and then you slide up to D as far as the drums go, you know, it helps being a drummer. I'm a drummer, and uh, bass is pretty simple. Not like complicated bass, but rudimentary bass is simple if you know how to play guitar. Uh, nothing to do with what I wanted to talk about, but uh, as a side note, whoop, this just in. Uh, we're in crazy land. Yeah. Huh. What's that? Yeah, we've always been in crazy land. Well, okay. So we're in crazy land now, according to my uh, producer. <clears throat> so we have entered crazy land. Oh yeah, the ending, I forgot about that. I mean, there's so many, so many things we could talk about living in crazy land. So we're living in crazy land, and you know, okay, let's start, let's start with, uh, it's Ramadan, right? Uh, until the 30th of this month, it just so happened that this month, uh, it started on the first of the month, and it goes till the, uh, sorry, started on the first and goes to the 30th, excuse me. Um, so your Muslim friends, they'll probably tell you it's the month of fasting, right? So. Crazy land example. Crazy land example number one is that they call it the month of fasting, right? But more food statistically is eaten during the month of Ramadan than any other time of the year. And it's not fast. They, they'll tell you we're fasting for the um, the uh, thirty days. Most Muslims will tell their friends, yeah, we're, we're, it's the month of fasting. We're fasting for thirty days. And if you just leave the questioning at that, then uh, you'll, you'll be like, okay, there's Muslims not eating for 30 days. But if you question them further and research this for yourself, um, they just don't eat during daylight hours. So a lot of Muslims, you know, the younger ones or whatever, will just sleep all day and then uh, eat at night. But then they have to wake up for the specific prayers. Excuse me for one second. It's the month of fasting, right? But the Muslims, uh, if you go to the mosque, if you have a local masjid or mosque in your area, I would suggest for the next few days uh, that you have the opportunity until the 30th that you go there at sundown at night and just go hang out. I mean, that might seem crazy to a lot of you people of uh, my skin color, but um, I've been to the mosque, I think, three or four times already this Ramadan because I have, you know, I've said it before, I have a lot of Muslim friends, I'm not bragging about it or whatever, it's not, it's just they're, they're people and uh, I have Muslim friends, I've studied Islam for the better part of ten years. I probably know more about Islam than anybody I've ever met who's not a Muslim. I'm not a, I'm not a scholar or anything, but uh, I've never met at a... Uh, a North American that knows more about Islam than I do that isn't a Muslim. <clears throat> Maybe they're out there, but I haven't met them yet. So, and I'm not saying, I'm just, I'm trying to be honest with you. That's just the honest truth. I'm not saying, I'm bragging about myself. There's lots of people about that probably know more, but, uh, oh, excuse me. That's the compressor in the back. 
Yeah, I don't have too much time because I got stuff to do, but uh, I wanted to sit, I wanted to talk about how we're living in crazy land. Turn this crap off. So, example, that was my example number one, is that uh, Ramadan, they call it the month of fasting, and I've been to the mosque, and I mean, Muslims are people just like you and me, so there's some Muslims who take it like really seriously, right? There's some Muslims uh, who will just stop smoking. There's some Muslims that I know who won't stop smoking for the month of Ramadan. There's some Muslims who say they have some sort of illness and they, they can't do anything for Ramadan, they just continue on, whatever. They, the idea is, you yeah, know, whatever. Look it up yourself if you want to know more about the month of Ramadan. But my point is, is that they call it the month of fasting, but statistically more food is eaten during the month of Ramadan than any other time of the year, so it's it's like this crazy land double think talk. Like it's the month of fasting, but we eat a lot. So I was at the mosque the other day, and I'm sitting beside somebody when they eat at the mosque and break the fast, right? And uh, the guy had like three plates of food. And some of them there take it more seriously, like I said. They'll have like you know, a date or whatever, and they go into the prayer area and pray, come back out, and have a, a meal. Like, they got the front... The mosque here got the front cover of the local paper, and they're talking about how great... Islam is in blah 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 and how during the month of Ramadan they fast. They left out, they left out all the stuff I'm telling you because I'm being honest with you. <laughs> uh, this is how it really is. Um, so there's some people there who probably would just eat a meal and take it more like really seriously like you know I'm trying to empath empathize with the poor and and obey Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, all at the same time. And, and uh, so I'll just have one meal and I'll go to bed and wake up and say these prayers. But there's big guys who are used to eating a lot a day, like overweight or big guys. And I watched one of these guys who I know sit there and eat like three heaping plates of food. Heaping plates. Like stuff. I could, I, I ate like a little bit of salad and rice and a little bit of like curry paste on top of it and everybody who knows me knows that Indian food and Pakistani food is my Achilles heel I love Indian food like I could eat it every single day for the rest of my life and I would be completely happy so I was eating you know a small plate of food and I thought well you know I'm a guest and <clears throat> I'm a guest and uh, you know I'll just get out of here after this, and that's what I did. But uh, I watched some people eat mounds and mounds of food. So it's the month of fasting, right? Yeah. But it's a month. It's a month of fasting, but it's also the month of picking up for some people. It's the month of fasting, but statistically more food is eaten during the month of Ramadan than any other time of the year. It's the month of fasting, but we eat. So it's like this crazy double thing. The other thing I wanted to get to uh, while we're on the topic is. Um, this is Al-Qaeda in Libya, right? So it's open open knowledge that MI6, British uh, intelligence, US, and U.S. intelligence is sort of manhandling and running the rebel forces against Colonel Muammar Gaddafi in Libya. And, I mean, if that's not ridiculous enough as it is, uh, the rebels... We call them rebels because if you call them what they really are, it would make people go insane trying to think about what the hell's going on. But the rebels admit that they're Al Qaeda shipped in from other parts of the world, uh, and, or Al Qaeda in Libya. So Al Qaeda now is good. So they're bad, but they're good. Al Qaeda is bad, but they're good because the United States is working with them. Like the enemy of my friend is my friend. The friend of my <laughs> the friend of my enemy. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. There you go. So Al Qaeda is good, but they're bad, but they're good. So don't question the government. And uh, it's just crazy. I mean, this stuff you can find out for yourself. It's mainstream. It's going to be mainstream news if it's not already. I don't watch mainstream news, and when I do, it just makes me want to throw up. So the alternative news and uh, the real information 
that's coming out that you have to sort of search for it ultimately ends up driving the news so I find out about things usually a few weeks or a week before you'll ever see it on mainstream news but like here's a good example I was watching uh, Russia Today yesterday and they're interviewing a reporter in Libya who's holed up in a hotel and they're saying we feel that we've been threatened uh, CNN correspondents and journalists, he says they're not journalists, but they're posing as journalists, are threatening them to not mention uh, how horrible things are going, to only tow the NATO line, and to make sure not to mention Al-Qaeda in Libya, and that the government is working, the US and British governments are working with Al-Qaeda to overthrow Colonel Gaddafi. And it's such nonsense. I mean, who's to say that Colonel Gaddafi hasn't made a backroom under the table deal. Who's to say? You've ju we've justified an entire coalition of army and an endless money pit of black hole debt and nation building, infrastructure rebuilding, gold and oil and all this crap for one guy? Like, insanity, right? Anyway. And meanwhile, they're talking about should we be giving oh, President Obama another Nobel Peace Prize? This is the crazy land that we're living in, this backwards double-think crazy land. That, yeah, he's he's got the con country into more war-mongering uh, military campaigns and military adventurism and pillaging than uh, any other president, uh, spending more money on the military than... Uh, any other president, but he deserves the Nobel Peace Prize for a second time. War is peace. Peace? He's a peacekeeper. Peace. <laughs> War is peace and freedom is slavery. Ignorance is strength. It's just backwards crazy land that we're living in. And uh, another thing I've been thinking about this last little while, I know that I've been sort of going on about chemtrails a lot, you know, and my friend comes in and he's just like, hey, Adam, I saw your thing about the chemtrails and all that, don't you know they're just burning oil? They're just burning oil, that's all they're doing, they're just burning oil. So don't worry about it. And I'm like, oh, okay. All the, you know, all these articles and research about chemtrails, it's just, oh, they're just burning oil, you didn't know. Don't you know? You didn't know? They're just burning oil. And you're like, oh, okay, that's supposed to just, that single thing diffuses everything. Okay, well, I guess they're just burning oil. Okay, never mind then. <laughs> And you try to talk to these people, I'm like, are you serious? And like, oh man, I kept coming back at it. He's like, are you still talking about that? They're burning oil, Adam. God, get over it. <laughs> so. Yep. So I know that I've been on uh, chemtrails this last little while. Uh, and focusing on that, but uh, one of the other things I did want to talk about was how it makes sense that the truth can't be mainlined. We have national security you know, especially in the United States. They consider, Hillary Clinton has said that we are in an information war and we are losing. They consider sensitive information to be a threat to national security. And if you put yourself in their shoes, it, it sort of makes sense, right? Sort of. So some things, like when Geraldo Rivera was in a tank disclosing the location that they were in when they were invading uh, Iraq. I mean, that's stupid, right? That's like, it's the truth, you know, and you're like, well, he's telling the truth. Yeah, but okay, but they're they're technically, you know, foreign occupations and they're in a war, war type scenario where he's putting tons of lives in jeopardy because he's saying, oh, here we are, you know. That's silly. So truth in that sense can be threatening to national security. So. I can, you can sort of see why governments and official mainstream lines lie, lie 
a lot, and they can't tell the truth because if they did, that would be a threat to national security. On the other hand, I mean, in the same topic though, another problem is like the the government will will probably never officially, in a capacity, say yes, we're cabin trailing you. Although, like ten years later, you know, there's you can find documented. <clears throat> Document, documented evidence about the government uh, spraying chemicals on certain cities to test and to test out whatever. This is publicly available information. You know, but the time that it's happening, they'll say the official line will say, "Be like, no, we're not doing this." And if you think about it reasonably, the mainstream official line has to be denial from a government legal standpoint because if they admitted yes okay we're cam trailing you yes we're doing this or yes we're adding fluoride to the water or, yes we're doing this and testing this on you then they open themselves up to litigation to people crazy people sue you know how people in the states especially sue for everything right now if the government openly admitted that they're cam trailing imagine everybody could sue the government every single person to the government for poisoning, for forced medicating, for any sort of illness that they came up with out of their mind, they could say this is a result of the chemtrailing. And I've been saying that people who have a video camera should be doing this, should be filming it, should be finding out. I don't have access to, to these testers to, like they had in the movie where, What in the World Did They Sprang, where they went up to the top of Mount Shasta and found this increase in a ridiculous increase in aluminum and other, and other uh, metals. I don't have access to that stuff. But if I did, I would have it all written out and then I would get a lawyer. Uh, and then I would sue the government. I mean, and I'm encouraging, if you're watching this, do that. I mean, that will at least get some results and uh, reaction going. Um, but you can see why the official line is, no, we're not doing this, is denial, right? Because then they have plausible deniability. They can say, like, you, you, the onus would be on you to prove the truth, where the onus isn't on them to prove the truth, because then, like, if somebody sues them, they can say, well, officially, we're not doing that in any capacity. So gives them that deniability. So it's smart. And obviously, this government and our current global elite infrastructure has, you know, had time to think about this and studied other other uh, world governments throughout history. So you can see why the official governmental stor story is usually going to be misinformation or a lie. So we're living in crazy backwards land, double speak backwards land, where up is down and left is right. And and black is white. So usually, as a rule, if the government says something is true, it's usually not, and vice versa. So when, you know, they started talking about Libya and Colonel Gaddafi and blah, 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 anti-humanitarian nonsense, meanwhile, the U.S. government is propping up and supporting dictators that are more ruthless than Colonel Gaddafi all over the world. I called it in March you know, what was going on in Libya and how it was going to be another endless quagmire like Iraq. And you can look at my uh, archive section to uh, Libya. I hate being right to see what I'm saying. And I do hate being right. It's nothing, to be it's nothing to be proud of or happy about. I'm not happy about that at all. I mean, here I am. And the, other, the other sense is like, well, how does it affect you? I mean, I don't know. It affects me. It affects me because it ticks me off and pisses me off. And I... I... I'm looking at this global model of national security, you can't tell the truth, global model of plausible deniability, we have to always use lies and misinformation, we can't ever tell anybody the truth, ever. I'm looking at that model and I don't like it. Although I can't put myself in a position where I, you sort of put yourself in a governmental position and say like, could you do any better than what they're doing? There, there really is certain things that you wouldn't want people to know, like that Geraldo Rivera case that I mentioned. like. If you're in a government, like, they keep secrets, right, because they want to protect the American people. If you knew everything about everything, eh, would you tell everybody? 
there's some things that you would probably think that people don't need to know, right? So you sort of empathize with the government in that sense. And the other sense, it's like certain things, like the truth about chemtrails, like how it affects everybody, or mass medication in, uh, in the in the water, like with fluoride and chlorine and all that, and the other additives, or the truth about vaccines, or how you know the the Clinton administration or Hillary Clinton apologized to purposely infecting however many Guatemalans with STDs and testing on various things and all the diabolical things that the U.S. government has been involved with, you know, creating Al-Qaeda. Now Al-Qaeda is bad, they're good, but they're good, but they're bad. You know, we're blaming them for 9-11, which is a completely other topic, and they're bad. But they're good because we're working with them and they're they're good but they're bad but they're good. Don't question the government or your Al Qaeda. So you're there now there's white Al Qaeda, you know. And this whole infrastructure system set up to promote national security uh, is now the apparatus is being turned around and aimed at the American people, which the original good old boys talking about, yeah, take those brown turban heads, Al Qaeda, send them back to Pakistan. And it's all being set up for them. Especially the returning vets, who are the number one uh, threat. You know, come back from the war, come back. Uh, the recording of the Rothschilds, you, you're a, a, a dog, you're, you're an, a worthless animal, cannon fodder. Come back from being that worthless animal, cannon fodder, and just die. Can't you just die? Like, we've used however many vaccines on you, we've pumped you up with whatever, we've, you've been around working around depleted uranium and all this radiological weapons and crap. Can't you just come back and die? Why do you have to come back and go on about freedom and how you know insider secrets now and liberty? Why do you have to do that? Especially since you have guns. So that's that's one of the big threats to the... I mean, we, we talk about the American government, but the American government has been hijacked just like the German government was hijacked, just like every government on the world has been sort of like infested and hijacked by these globalist offshore banker criminals. And uh, this is the way the world is going. We're living in crazy land. Crazy backwards land. And the sci-fi aspect of living in crazy land is a whole other subject. I would encourage anybody watching this to check out uh, David Wilcox's latest book, The Source Field Investigations, to watch the recent video that he did with uh, George Nury on Coast to Coast uh, two days ago. And uh, I would encourage anybody watching this to look up some David Icke information as well and to check out uh, and to balance it all with some uh, Infowars.com information. Uh, but I tend to, to lean towards the positive outlook like the Book of Revelation positive outlook, the David Wilcock positive outlook, that uh, in the end the good guys win. And I really do believe that no matter how dark and evil times may get and how super scary and sci-fi out of this world things may seem, I believe things are going to get better. But as the old dinosaurs die, they piss and moan a lot. And the problem is these dinosaurs that are dying have their fingers in every pie all over the world. So they're pissing and moaning quite a lot, and a lot of eggs are going to be cracked to make this omelet. And I don't know if I could, if I was in a government type situation or capacity, I don't know if I could do, I think I could do better than a lot of our representatives. And that's the, but I'm not in that capacity. I'm just saying. We're supposed to be the government, right? And we have elected officials to represent us. That's not the way it is anymore. There are leaders, and there's like the, the Federal Reserve. <clears throat> Nobody appointed any of those people. Nobody elected any of those people. Ben Bernanke wasn't elected. The big new Brzezinski wasn't elected. Uh, you, know, you can go through the list yourself. There's a lot of a lot of people that influence and control and pull the strings, the purse strings especially, like the Rothschilds and Rockefeller families. None of these people were elected. <sighs> yeah. I was watching this thing last night about the uh, about time dilation and uh, watching this thing about uh, speeding up and slowing down time because uh, how gravity. 
ultimately affects time. So if you can, and our perception of time. So if you can affect gravity, or make your artificial gravity or anti-gravity, and put it around people or objects, you actually are creating your own time space. You can slow up and speed down time. And I was watching uh, documents about, or watching, reading these documents about experiments that were done. Some guys out of Toronto and Vancouver who were doing these experiments. Uh, you can look all this up for yourself. And uh, pretty interesting stuff. But we're living in crazy land. This 15,000 mile an hour uh, jet that was quote unquote lost. Uh, one of my friends, his brother-in-law was the guy who invented that so that was cool because we got the emails we got the emails who uh, as he was working on it he would send us it's it's really cool to see your own work in your own lifetime and usually when you're working for Lockheed Martin in the skunk works division uh, you don't get to, uh, to see your own work because everybody's really heavily compartmentalized and he was excited that he got to see his own jet so I haven't talked to him or we haven't talked to him since this whole debacle of it going missing thing, but we're living in crazy sci-fi land with smart dust and time machines and underground bases and flying discs and all that and double speak, complete double speak like humanitarian love bombs are freedom and you know humanitarian aid humanitarian war in Libya is a peace movement it's just people don't question things and I, I'm, gl I'm glad that the system is slowly falling apart I suppose this old world order system and I do think things are going to get a lot better but we're right now we're living in crazy land and I feel for people who who uh, are ignorant I suppose we're all on our own journey forward so whatever I'm ignorant of a lot of things I realized the other night as well that I want to know everything and that's the bottom line I don't know I'm just being completely honest I have a hunger for me that in me that wants to know everything I want to know the truth about everything I don't know if that makes me an egotistical narcissist or not but I want to know everything when I see a car I want to know everything about that car you know when I see a person I want to know everything about that person and uh, when I look at a situation I realize that there's not two sides the world isn't like square it's there's multi-level chess games going on and the theater why do they call it theater of war? There's multi-level dynamics going on and things are more sophisticated than black and white and Coke and Pepsi and uh, and I realized that. And I realized the other day I want to know everything. I also realized the other day that uh, if you believe in your future self, like first of all, if you if you take the concept that you that there's life after death, with you know anyway, that's a concept that it's up for debate. But if you take that it's up for debate because people say, you know, blah, blah, blah. We're all human, right? <clears throat> You're entitled to your opinion is what I was getting at. But, like, it's, it's up for debate because there's humans who say that, you know, it is up for debate. Where other people would consider it axiomatic by looking at nature and considering that death is, is a word that we've sort of given finality to when, like, a mirror that's broken came from sand. This is going back to sand ultimately. So there's no death of a mirror. There's no death of a flower. This flower here, you know, uh, hasn't really died. It's gone into the ground and there's seeds in there and it's, you know, perpetual. And even in the subatomic level or quantum physics level, there's no such thing as death. There's only states of change. So I argue that there is no such thing as death or finality in the sense that we've termed death. But that's a whole other subject. <clears throat> I was thinking the other day, like, if you believe in your future self, right, if you believe in a future self, especially after death, then you have to believe that this future self of you is more aware about everything and knows more about everything than you now. So your future you could be thousands of years advanced, more advanced than you. It could, I mean, imagine future you, right? Imagine when you were born and try to imagine yourself now. You know, like, I mean, 
you know more now than you did when you were born, clearly. You know, you're going to know more later. Imagine future you outside of the body. Now, some people say that this is your higher self. And this is the term higher self. Is, is this advanced you that's outside of the body? Now, some people go so far as to say that this outside higher you is guiding you. Your higher self was guiding you. Access your higher self. And it sounds, I'm trying to demystify things, you know. I want to know everything about everything. I'm being honest with you. That's how I feel. Demystifying it means that, like, uh, you know, we're taking these far out concepts and burning it down to brass tacks, even though those brass tacks may seem a little far-fetched. But if your future you is guiding you and you believe in life after death, that's sort of a real possibility that your future you is sort of helping you out giving you these dreams, showing you where life is, is taking you or helping and nudging you. It's a concept that you have to spend some time thinking about. <laughs> if you believe in life after death, I, you know. So, uh, that's about it. I have to do other things and to be completely honest, I have to go to the bathroom. So. Thank you for watching the Adam Josh Oral Brog, episode number 58. Hope you like my uh, new Ralph Lauren shirt. Yeah, I usually don't wear sports jerseys, but uh, when somebody gets you a gift, you sort of have to uh, take it. My Ralph Lauren shirt. I feel something. I'm going to pop my collar now. What's up, ladies? Tell your friends. Get a job.